This is the first of what I think will probably be three videos on uh, how to sort data in a list view by clicking on the column header. And you can sort on different columns by clicking on different column headers. And the first part actually doesn't have anything to do with a list view. It has to do with getting the data into uh, memory and into a file, which will in the later videos be displayed in the list view. And it's somewhat a, a recap of videos uh, 165 through 169 on serialization and binary read and write. Uh, so you, if you want to get more detail on how this works, you might check out those videos. The main trick is to have a record structure, which in C Sharp is usefully done as a class. So we have class student info, and then we have uh, four fields of different types, int, string, and uh, date, time. And we have a constructor where you pass parameters to the constructor, and it sets the values of these uh, data fields. So by instantiating a student info with a new operator and passing these parameters, you create a record which is populated with data. And then on the next level of that we have a generic list of type student info which is an array of, of records like this. In effect it's a table in memory consisting of uh, any number of records you can dynamically add. And to input the data, we have four fields corresponding, or four text boxes corresponding to the four fields, and a number of records field that gets updated every time we add the student info. And then when we want to write it to a binary file, we click the binary write to file. And in the next videos, to read it back, we'll have a binary read from file. But the binary read from file we'll have to put it in the list box which is going to be in this space which won't get created till the next bot, next uh, video and the save student data button basically uh, doesn't save it into the file but saves it into the memory structure and we check that all the four fields have values in them if they don't we pop up a message box that says all fields have to be filled in and then we convert the uh, data type of the text boxes. In the case of the string, of course, we don't have to convert it at all. But in the case of uh, the ints and the uh, date, we need to use convert int32 and datetime.parse. And we put that in a try catch because it might be that the data input can't be converted, like if there's a bunch of letters in the int or there's nothing that looks like a date in the date. <laughs> so we have a try catch that pops up an exception uh, that it says what the problem was specifically with the ex.message and the exception ex in the catch. And then we make sure that the student number is greater than or equal to zero and that the average mark is uh, less than or equal to 100 and greater than or equal to 0. So the average marks between 0 and 100 inclusively. And if it matches all these, we allocate a new student info and pass these uh, fields into the uh, constructor. So that creates a record populated with the data. And then we add that student info to our student record array with a student record dot add of the the record structure and we increment our number of records and set the current number into the text field that shows the number of records and then we clear out all the text boxes and reset the focus to the first one so it's ready for new user input and if any of these tests don't work first of all I check a else if if the student number is less than zero and say invalid student number and if that's not the case the only thing that can be wrong is that the average mark isn't in the proper range so I pop up a message box that says uh, not in proper range average mark well 
that's probably enough for this video. The next video will actually create the list box and we'll be able to see the data we're saving to the file which uh, is a, a good idea because you don't write only data isn't too useful. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot and I'll see you in the next video and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.